Simon Parks is a former career politician from the United Kingdom. His career centered around serving on the Whitby Town Council, though he is currently dedicating his life to explaining the extraterrestrial phenomenon. He first went public about his extraterrestrial experiences in 2013. The following are what Simon claims to be his experiences with a myriad of extraterrestrial beings. Simon Park's first memory of an alien encounter is from around the time he was barely a toddler. He remembers looking out from the bars of his crib to see two long green legs. The creature, a nine foot tall mantid, picked him up to hold him for a time and then promptly left. Simon remembers being confused because he knew his mother had five pink fingers on each hand, but the being that grabbed him had four green fingers per hand. Simon asserts that all human and extraterrestrial contact is made with the full consent of all parties involved, including any humans. What sometimes happens is that aliens will decide that a person should not be allowed to remember most of their contact experience. So they are made to forget the time they agreed to be a part of any extraterrestrial activities. These people then recall selective experiences of their encounters and assume they were taken against their will. Simon seems to think that the extraterrestrials intentionally do this so that people cannot back out of their agreements, because if they knew they could cancel on their agreement, most would. He likened this process to needing a receipt to return something at a store. If a person can't remember making a binding agreement with extraterrestrial beings, they can't ask to be removed from the agreement. Simon made his agreement at a very young age. Since the entities he's involved with are certain he would never back out of their contract, they have allowed him to retain his memory of the time he made his agreement. Simon was revisited by the tall manted being that came to his crib. This being told Simon to call it his mother, saying that it was his more important mother, that he could learn what it was like to be an extraterrestrial, to learn more about Earth and the universe and take part in the extraterrestrial's work. Simon, certain he wanted to learn more at that young age, agreed instantaneously. One of his later memories comes from around the time he was roughly five years old, he had fallen ill with chickenpox, and his mother had to leave for work. Upon leaving, she told Simon that he shouldn't worry, as they would take care of him. Simon had no knowledge of who they were, but it can be presumed that Simon's mother had some degree of contact with extraterrestrial entities who had worked out plans for this in advance. Since he was sick, Simon dozed off for a nap. Upon waking, there was a man at the side of his bed with a glass of water and a tea towel. Simon assumed he was a waiter. Eventually, the man who appeared to be a waiter offered to place an implant in Simon's left hand. The waiter said that placing it there would allow the being whom Simon refers to as mother to know where he is and help him if he is ever sick or in danger, and that it would be a good thing. Simon then countered by asking, is it a good thing? This took the waiter aback. He seemed shocked by the question, and then specified, if you want your mother to know where you are, it is a good thing. If you don't, then it is a bad thing. Simon eventually accepted, and before anything could be done, two people who appeared to be human jumped out of his closet, seemingly by hopping through a dimensional portal, and they greet him with a friendly, hello, Simon asks the waiter who those men are, to which the waiter responds, Human enforcement. The two men draw out handguns. One of them heads to the front door, and the other to the back. The waiter explains that some people from the British government are nearby, and may try to interfere with their meeting. Simon sees out his window that there is another being, dressed similarly to the human enforcement, who is one of their compatriots. This being looks roughly human, but it is too tall, the face is a little messed up, and the body appears lumpy. 
It is obvious that this being is an extraterrestrial in a poor disguise. This outside enforcement being gives the one inside an all-clear signal, indicating that the threat has left. The waiter then pulls out a glass marble with a black speck at the center and indicates that this is the implant. Simon is worried it will hurt because the marble appears big. The waiter then says that the glass marble is just the casing. It is the black speck on the inside that will be going into his left hand. Simon then reconfirms that he will go through with the procedure. A chunk of his skin and flesh then lifts up from his left hand. No blood is lost from this, and no pain is caused. But the sight of this happening still bothers young Simon. The waiter then says, Look at all the animals from the zoo that are here to visit you. Simon then sees a bunch of animals walk around him as though he were at the zoo, and this calms him down. Simon is certain that there weren't actually animals brought to his room, but that the extraterrestrial beings projected this vision into his mind so that the procedure would be more bearable. The procedure was quickly completed, the animals disappeared, and his skin and flesh soon returned to normal without any markings or indications that a surgery had taken place. The human enforcement and the waiter soon left through the closet, and only a small, four-foot-tall gray stayed behind. Simon asked what the gray was doing, and it said, or rather telepathically communicated, that it was instructed to watch over him until his adult returned. Simon asked the gray to refill his glass of water, it responded by saying it would do so once he had finished the last couple sips. Simon insisted the Grey refill it, and threatened the Grey with violence if it refused. The Grey then refilled the glass of water. Shortly after handing Simon the water, the Grey said to Simon that his adult had returned. It then transformed into an owl, and flew towards a crack in the window. As it got closer to the window, the owl shrunk in size until it was no longer visible, and then disappeared completely. A moment later, Simon's mother returned. Simon has recently clarified that the human enforcement men that popped out of his dresser in the previous encounter are analogous to the men in black. They act as physical protection during an extraterrestrial mission, sort of like bodyguards. Not all men in black are men, some are women, and not all of them are human. On another occasion, some type of shadow entity that he assumes was sent by extraterrestrials visited Simon. This being would play a type of game with Simon that in his youth he called the arm game. The shadow entity would stretch its arms out in different directions. Eventually, Simon figured out that the being wanted him to copy its motions. Once he matched the shadow entity's pose, it would move its arms to a different location, and Simon would have to then copy its pose once again. The movements during the game picked up pace over time. Eventually, Simon was able to predict the shadow being's movements, and could sense what it would do before it made the move. He assumes the ultimate goal of this game was to develop some degree of precognition. According to Simon, the extraterrestrials he regularly meets with have advanced technologies that allowed them to implant a person's consciousness within an artificial body. These artificial bodies are still being developed, and can only last a few weeks before they start to deteriorate. What usually happens is the artificial body's mind goes, and the consciousness inside experiences insanity. Extra precautions need to be taken to remove the consciousness from the artificial body before the breakdowns happen. Simon's role amongst the extraterrestrials has been to take on various roles while inhabiting an artificial body. He was prepared for these roles in a testing simulator. During these simulations, he was given a crew and a mission. Missions were typically diplomatic in nature, and he would be given a scenario where there was a conflict on a planet. Simon's goal would be to prevent a war from breaking out, and he had to lead his crew in order to reach certain goals. 
Throughout his time with them, Simon has discovered that the mantid beings have a hierarchy. Short greys are at the bottom. At the top is a mantid being known as the Great One. Mantids view all creatures as equal in their right to life and existence, but recognize that some have a more important role to play. The short greys tend to be subversive because they are a subjugated race. They lack emotional empathy and can only really process logical facts. Since they don't like their position, they will sometimes be ostensive and drag their heels to slow down the projects they are working on. Sometimes threatening them is the only way to get them to cooperate. The extraterrestrials Simon has encountered have told him rather plainly that they view America's government as the most important on Earth. As they put it, America speaks for the world. And Simon has stated that extraterrestrial entities are regularly in contact with the American government. According to Simon, the extraterrestrial life forms interacting with life on our planet schedule their time meticulously. Some extraterrestrials solely work to schedule for their crew. If a person is to be abducted, it will be scheduled at an exact time. 5.05 p.m., for example. And this will be set weeks in advance. The same beings who are involved in the abduction may have a meeting scheduled with an important Earth figure somewhere else entirely at 5.09 p.m. Their ability to interact with time and dimensions allows them to be highly efficient and accomplish much in as little time as possible. When these entities set up meetings with people, they tell them an exact time and location, and they show up exactly as planned, expecting others to meet their standards of timeliness. They are much unlike humans in this regard, as they are never late for appointments. There was one time in Simon's youth when he was playing with a friend and accidentally fell some distance and landed on some pavement. When he regained consciousness, he was in a bed at his friend's house with a massive headache. When his friend had found him lying down inside, he wondered how Simon had gotten there. Simon had no idea himself. Later on, he recalled that the extraterrestrials that implanted him scooped him up onto some type of craft. There were mantid doctors working on him with an uncharacteristic degree of haste. Usually when working, they are quick and calculated, but on this occasion their arms were moving incredibly fast compared to anything Simon had seen before. When Simon asked them what had happened, they told him that he had died, but that he shouldn't worry as they have fixed the problem. Simon only recollected this experience after a visit to a regular Earth doctor decades later. The doctor asked if he had had any spine trauma during his life, and if he was experiencing any pain in that area. Simon replied that he did not know of any spine issues in his past, and was having no trouble in the present. The doctor was surprised because they were looking at an x-ray that showed previous massive spine trauma. The doctor said that Simon shouldn't worry, as the damage had healed up nicely considering its severity, and was shocked because it looked as though his spine had at one point been broken in two. 